you have to win championships to be considered a great team, then the Lamar Cougars should be the exception to that rule. For the past three years, the Cougars have been a great team that has come up one win short. The record in that time, 44-2. In 1993, Lamarck was 14-0, but on a cold and windy day in Austin, Stephenville got the best of them, 26-13. They were one win away. In a rematch in 1994, Lamarck was just two quarters away from its first championship, but again, they came up short, 32-17 to the Yellow Jackets. They were one win away. For the third straight year, the Cougars try to get that all-elusive title and become a part of Texas high school football history. They're one more win away. To get there, they have to get past another Yellow Jacket team. This time, the Yellow Jackets from Denison. Welcome to the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. It's the Tell Bonham of Lamar going to be kicking for the Cougars. So punts, plays cornerback, and everything else. It's a short kick by Bonham, and it's fumbled at the 30. And Lamar has the football. Great field position at the 30. I guess right off the bat, Dennison fumbles. Lamarck recovers and they got the ball to the 30-yard line. Off to give a field position on your own 30. Quasi Cockrell gonna give it to Derek Foster. Big hole left side. Down. Both lead the team in catches. Here's the pitch to Derek Foster. Huge hole right side. Cut him all stater. He was there. And you're getting about eight. What do you think, Cockrell? The roll here maybe worked effectively for him. Look for a blitz from Dennison. And the option, Cockrell gonna keep it inside the five touchdown, Lamar. He's an, an average of about 1.1. Cockrell scores on the option. Isn't there for Cockrell. As you see him come around, he wanted to pitch it. There was no one there. And he's if you've got Derek Foster in the backfield, you gotta go out. Cougs lead it 6-0. And the greatest kicker in Texas State High School history is gonna add the extra point. Russell Bonham gets it through, and the Cougs lead it. It's seven to nothing. Nala came up to make the stop. John, that's a big surprise. They spread out the offense without Reggie Hunt. You couldn't run the top. Back. Tim Dispensa, Derek McCray, Ronnie Mason, Jamarcus ball game. Obviously not. I think Bob Brown had two different game plans. If you can play Reggie Hunt, you're going to run the football. If you can't, Quasi Cockrell gives it inside. Derek Foster. The pitch goes instead to the fullback. And he got just one or two. And again, Roy Bradley. Bradley once again on the stop. He's all over the field early. Sheds off his block. Cam Allen also there. He's coming from the other side from where the play was going. Pitch. Steens get, breaks a tackle. And he Cockrell hands off inside. Derek Foster. Some nifty moves. Foster. If you're Bob Brown, you don't like this. They're now on the 18. You've given up 16 yards in two or three plays. And you had him. You want to get him to the football. Quasi Cockrell on the screen pass, has a man wide open. That's Theron Smith, and he's got a first stiff arm. Back to throw Cockrell, he's got a man right side. That's Maurice Scott's drive. You'll remember it started all the way back on their own two-yard line. And they've got their third first down of this drive, keeping it going with 11.05 to play in the second quarter. Anthony King, Derek Foster, it's Foster inside. He's got about six or seven more yards where he can. Look at him as he gets up here, gets right behind a block of Will Jeramy, and then just takes that small seam he has, spins it around, and gets the extra yard. Him out. Back to throw is Moore. He's got a little bit of time, but Royland Bradley's in his face. And then Derek Mouton cleans it up. Punting situation this time from their own 14-yard line. Comes in. Watch this, folks. Derek Mouton back, but here comes Royland and Moore just ducked. But it was enough. That's our only score. Cockrell inside the pitch and then the reverse. The reverse to Goins and he has a first game. Any kind of surprise for this Yellow Jacket team. And John, he's one of two super sophomores, they call him. He and Jerron Reed. And this is a new wrinkle they've been trying to add on the Cougars offense. You need a, a little break here and there. Second and 12, Cockrell back to throw, throws over the middle and it's complete. Maurice Scott with the catch. Coverage beats the corner. Reggie Hunt was shallow on this play. And from his free safety position, you see right here, he just doesn't get a break on the ball, can't get over there. And then it amounts to about a 20 yard gain. Uh, so first and 10 from the 25 yard line. That's Foster inside, he's got a hole. He's to the 15, he's to the 10. Inside to the 10, to the seven yard line. And it's first and goal for the coup. And you'll see him 
Over to the right, on the left side, makes a big block there, and Foster just takes advantage of the green pastures in front of him. Been doing this all season long, and once yeah. again, make it 13 to nothing. Fake to Foster, he throws, touchdown Lamar! Ryan Silvertooth from Quasi Cockrell, and it's 13 nothing. Lamar over Dennis. Even though he doesn't get the ball, the little play action. Everyone keys on Foster, then the dump pass to the tight end, Silvertooth, and it's six. The uh, sprint out by the quarterback, left the tight end alone. Came with Russell Bynum in for the point after. Jamarcus Powers with the hold. It's good, and it is 14 to nothing. Lamar over Dennison. Now. You've got 4.13 left in the second. Is it like you hurt your ankle in the middle of a ball game in, say, the second quarter or third quarter, you can make it through an adrenaline? He hasn't practiced all week. He's got to get middle. Jackets, and they're going to have to start it first and 15. You're going to take the handoff, and Lamarck's defense stops him once again. Lonnie Griggs led the way on him now. Either he's going to pass or run the draw, and it's the draw, and that's not working. Not with Derek Mouton reading it well, and it's going to bring up a third and about nine, 18 yards to go. Third and back. The fake, and once again, a swarm of Lamar Cougars all over Curtis. Out on the field as uh, Derek Mouton was a little shaken up. And by ourselves, I would have gone for the two-point conversion. The penalty was against Dennis Inshaw. Over the 30, Corey Watts out exactly why Reggie Hunt cannot play offense. In the meantime, Derek Foster breaks one toward the sideline. And anytime you're running out the clock with Derek Foster, you got a chance to score. All the Lamar Cougars in the state championship game. Yeah, Coach Brown, uh, you guys find yourselves in a 14-point hole right now. What do you need to do to turn things around today? Well, we're having a real difficult time handling the pressure of this competition. You know the in the uh, state finals and in the Astrodome, uh, they're handling the, the pressure very well and uh, making very few mistakes. And it seems like every other uh, uh, down that we're making a mistake. And we're going to have to regain our composure and uh, come back and play the kind of football we're capable of playing. Had 141 total yards. Lamar, 12 first downs, 130 rushing yards, 40 passing yards, 170, excuse me, total yards for Lamarck. As opposed to Denison, they had one first down, 24 rushing yards, minus two passing, 22 total yards. It's been a great season of high school football here. Uh, there's your rushing yards, Foster with 86, Reed, Goins, King, uh, no, King has some yards, Anthony King does have some yardage here in the first half. Uh, Reggie Hunt did not carry the football. Chris Steens with 15 yards, so uh, this is definitely smashed up bus. Okay, the teams are back on the field for like a regular game, and it's a state championship. Great offense, great defense. You really hold your own out there. Well, that's how we plan. You know, it's just another ball game that's uh, been our success, and we're going to try to do that. But it's 14 to nothing, and uh, we've been there and done that. We got to play 24 more minutes. They're a great football team across the, the field there, and they will definitely come back. They've got a lot of weapons to throw at us. It certainly helped taking that uh, opening kickoff fumble and really capitalizing on that with the option by Cockrell. No doubt. That was big seven points. Got the momentum in our favor. And uh, then we put the other one on, which is a big one, and uh, now we're playing defense. At the, at the end of the first half, you guys, you were complimented by Coach Brown. He was saying that you guys were really holding your composure, and they were pretty nervous out there and not capitalizing on their stuff. What did you tell these guys at the break? Well, I told them that, uh, you know, we've been here. You know, the first 24 minutes gets you in a position to win a football game, but it's, it's the last 24 before you call yourself a champion. And, and uh, I reminded them that they want to be uh, undefeated state champions, and they've got to play these 24 minutes. And uh, if they do, then they will uh, remember it for a lifetime, and they'll be champions for a lifetime. Thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck. Manager has been here a couple of times before, and maybe that's why they played with a little more poise in that first half and they lead in this ball game 14 to nothing. It's the Texas Bowl, the third straight year. that the All the way up to waiting to coming out to, at the second half. Coaches like to take any advantage they can get. That's because, you know, did it. There's Cogrell. Hand up inside, Anthony King busts it up, picks up about 10 yards, maybe 11. He's got another Lamar first down. And they moved him to fullback his first year, fullback this year. He is a large man to try to bring down as he comes barreling through the line. Rod Gunter and Reggie Hunt finally did. Curtis Moore, fumble! Lamar has the football, touchdown! Derek McRae comes up with it and goes into the end zone. But I believe it may have been Royland Bradley who got it. Derek McRae 
Ray scoops it up, runs in, and Lamarck has itself a 20 to nothing lead. That just went right, right, but it looked like it wasn't a bad handoff, it just went right between his arms. It went straight up in the air, and the ball is just loose there. Easy touchdown. 20 to nothing, Lamarck leads it, and that is not the way Bob Brown wanted to start this. Handling the opening kickoff on their own 30. Here, they get the ball back, they hold Lamarck, they got a penalty for legal participation, then they get another penalty. But if you're Denison, you just can't do this and expect to win a championship game against a team as good as Lamarck. Russell Bono with Jamarcus Powers, the holder. It is up and it is good. It's 21 to nothing, folks. You're watching the 4A state championship, the Texas Bowl. We'll be back with more right after. Get into it and get behind the team. There's a fake handoff, Curtis Moore on the option, a swarm of Lamarck defenders led by Royland Bradley. I win that game after being, or after giving up 21 or 24 points in the quasi cockerel to Dominique Green. That has been a popular combination today. He picks up nine, and once again, it's going to be second and one. Now he's come out with a super game plan. The pitch to Foster. He's got a seam, and he picks up five or six more. Fakes the handoff. He's going to throw. Steps up into the pocket, but he's hit, and it's intercepted by Lamarck. Derek Mouton picks Derek it up. Derek Mouton rumbling and stumbling inside the 20 to down to the 16 yard line. Derek Mouton with another big play for the Lamar defense. The third turnover of the day by Dennis. The afternoon and here's the replay right here. Moore setting up, stepping up and hello. It is Royland Bradley and Derek Mouton gets his second interception of the season with that. Unfortunately for the Yellow Jackets though. Inside handoff, that's Chuck Ferguson. He rumbles, he gets about five yards up and made the stop, but the Jacket fans are just wishing, praying that Reggie Hunt could carry the ball instead of tackle it once yeah, in a while. but it's a great gut check with Reggie. Get something going for Dennison. Curtis Moore gonna throw back this side, complete. Denard Whitfield makes a move, makes another, makes another, and he's out of bounds. Great play by Whitfield. Royland Bradley had to come all the way from his defensive end position and make the tackle. We were under a minute to play in the third quarter. Reggie Hunt, the lone setback. Curtis Moore back to throw, rolls right. Throws near sidelines, intercepted Cam Nolan to the 25 and down there at the 24. Another big turnover by that Lamar defense, the fourth of the day. Open on the inside curl. Instead, he's trying to hit Whitfield right here, and he throws into double coverage. If he'd have waited a little bit, he had Corey Watson open on the inside curl. Lenny King and Derek Foster behind him. Cockrell on a little pass over the middle. It's complete. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the third quarter. We got one more quarter of 4A football to play, and the Lamar Cougars lead the Denison Yellow Jackets 21 to nothing. We'll be back. Nice defense on that interception. Cockrell, that looking good bank, right here. Steps up into the pocket. He's got some running room. He's out of the 20, the 15. Nice cutback move inside the 10. Touchdown, Quasi Cockrell. They say he's the slowest guy on the field. We got a flag on the play. And, and something had to happen there because everyone led up at one point. They got an, a, a, did he signal? Oh, wait a minute, that's coming back. But he left two or three Yellow Jackets just standing flat footed with those moves. Where's the same number, matter of fact? Legal block called against Cougar. From 34 yards, Jamarcus Powers with the hold. The kick is up, and it is good. So the 35th of his career, Russell Bynum adds to his state record. Lamarck adds to his lead. It is 24 to nothing. Lamarck Cougars lead the Denison Yellow Jackets 24 to nothing in motion. I think they're going to throw the football. Yes, they are. They're going deep, and it is tipped, and it is picked off. Intercepted by Derek Riggs. He's to the 40. He's to the 40. Well, once again, a penalty kind of Mars a great uh, play for the Cougars. But Derek Riggs comes up with his third interception of the, de of the year. And I failed to see the penalty again in that situation. The penalty comes after, kind of tough. comes after the play actually with an incident feature with Jamarcus Powers and Lamarck and another player away from the ball totally. They got an old ruckus down there, and that's what it was. The tight end, Quasi hands off to Derek Foster. He's got some room on the right side. He's coming on the sideline to the 50, to the 45, cuts back to the 35, Goodbye. 30, to the 20. Touchdown, Lamarck. You can't 
draw it up any better than that. That's a fantastic play. Actually, we have two Denison Yellow Jacket players down. They didn't touch anybody. One of them is hobbling around. The other one looks like he might have a torn up knee. I don't want to speculate, but he's in a lot of pain. Now, Rod Gunter oh. and Gary Banks both are both down for the Yellow Jackets. An 82-yard run, and uh, that was uh, shades of last week. Yeah, when he goes for the long runs. And you know the way they got, they have to twist on the turf. Here it is right here. Watch him, he's right behind Greg Robinson, gets the big block, heads it down the sideline. There are gonna be two Denison players there, and he just shifts them. That was either a knee or an ankle that Corey Watson hurt. Right here, he just gets the corner, and I just don't know. I've heard this kid has 4-2 speed, 4-3 legitimate, and they both banks and Watson has the angle, but he just makes the correct move. Well, it shows great field position, uh, field vision for Foster here. Saw this angle coming and made the shift to go on in for the score. And when Derek Foster turns on those turbochargers in the second carry, he is go gone almost every single time. I expected this kind of ball game. It started from the opening kick when Dennison fumbled, and it has been downhill for the Yellow Jackets ever since. Russell Bynum with another point after. He's been busy today. It is now 31 to nothing. Lamar leads Denison in the 4A state championship with just this game going there. You see head coach Alan Waddell. He still doesn't look happy, does he? TJ, look at him. Hey, he's, he's very intense. He does not quit until the game is over. It's over right now, and he's coming out. The main thing he is talking to his team about right now is because the penalty that happened before the unsportsmanlike conduct. He does not want anyone to have any impression that his team is not a sportsmanlike team, and that is why he has a personal problem with that. Reggie Hunt behind him. Toss Corey Watson inside handoff. Nothing there. You guys do, but I'm sure he's the kind of coach that doesn't put up with this kind of stuff. Well, and, and this also sends a message to the rest of the team. There we go, there we go. Two teams left in the state of Texas in class. At 10, ladies and gentlemen, not third and one. Curtis Moore back to pass. Royland Bradley all over him once again. Doesn't jump over him this time. <laughs> he makes the cut in the backfield. He's got trips to the right. Rolls right, throws. It is complete. And that's going to be the Yellow Jackets' first score of the ball game. Denard Whitfield has put the Yellow Jackets on the board. A sweet little... Okay, we got him. This is James Burnett's dad, James, right here. And I guess this is what it's all about, be able to sit in the stands and look out there and say, that's my boy. That's, that's a great feeling. Uh, it's three years of uh, hard work for him. I'm, I'm very proud of him. I'm happy that he uh, finally got the ring. Uh, all these guys deserve it. After going two years losing it, they really deserve it. Well, Christmas came early for the Burnett family and for everybody at Lamarck. Congratulations. Hope you enjoy the rest of the game. Back up to you guys. He didn't want to see him on the field. He didn't want to see him for the third straight year. Let's talk, don't you know, pin it on one kid difference. and one play. Now, here's the big Greg Robinson on the pitch is going to carry the football. you got to be kidding me. They put Brent, big Greg Robinson at the tailback, and he picked up three or four. Is that rubbing salt in the wound? Fourth down. I don't know what Ellen Waddell what the motivation was there. I, I think Rod wanted to get the senior a carry with the football before his career ended, and that's going to be it for Greg Robinson, their all career. I think he went over to the coach and said, Coach, just let me do it once. So I got to practice. Hear the ball one time, and he'll never forget that in his career. No, it's kind of like being uh, William the Refrigerator Perry, but this is a holy, holy loss of one. Jeff McKenzie led the way. 20 seconds to go, and I think that is going to be the last play of this state championship ball game. And let's listen to the crowd over on the Lamarck side. with the trophy. Let's go down. P.J. Alls has joined him, and he's there 
Here's some commentary. All right, thank you very much, John. Alan Waddell, you got the trophy finally. Now, how's it feel? Oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. The uh, community, they've been behind us all the way to school. A great job by the coaches all these all this time. And, of course, the kids, you know. They wouldn't, it wouldn't have happened without them. It wouldn't have been worth it without them. You said you wanted to win it this year because this would be the last year of the single 4A championship. Even a little more special? That's right. Makes it real special. Congratulations, Coach Waddell, on the state championship. Back up to you. Let's go ahead and win. We did not cause a play game. We came to claim the victory. Today's pretty close.